Hello, my Bethel Thousand Nation. How is everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. Hmm. So good. All right, let's get into the day story. I am ready to. The title of the story is. I mean, screw all of this. Let's just get into it. Nah. It's Lazy Masquerade. Six creepy photos with chilling unsolved mysteries. It's not like Mr. Balls and stuff. It don't have like part one or anything like that. So it seemed interesting. I'd like to see what he does. You know what I mean? All right. Let's get into the story. Go ahead. Turn the lights down low. Put on something comfy. Come up with something special. Let's get... Curious. Let's get curious. You'd be forgiven for thinking this photo was nothing more than an example of bad driving. Just a picture of a car reversed into a boarded up. Okay, sad thing is, I have seen this before. Not this picture, per se, but I have seen the, this exact scenario. No, I, I really have. Old house. Indeed, there's nothing overtly creepy about it. When you hear the backstory to this image, however, I think you'll change your mind. In 2004, Brianna Maitland, a 17-year-old from Montgomery, Vermont, went missing. She hasn't been seen or heard from since. Okay. This was her car, a pale green four-door 1985 Oldsmobile sedan. It was found like this in the middle of the night with its headlights on full blast, partially inside the old Dutchburn house, an abandoned barn. There was no trace of Brianna anywhere. Her driver's license was still in the vehicle, along oh, with two uncashed paychecks on the front seat. She had also left behind all her clothes, her ATM card, her migraine medicine, makeup and contact lenses. You ain't leaving all that, bro. Period. Unless you have to. You know what I mean? No. Some of her belongings were strewn on the ground in front of the vehicle, suggesting that she had either left in a hurry or had been forcefully removed from the car. This picture was taken about one mile away from where she worked. The Black Lantern Inn. She had a shift that fateful night. According to her co-workers, she got into her car around 11.20pm and drove off into the night. Nobody else left with her. The trooper who came across Brianna's car assumed an intoxicated driver had crashed their vehicle and abandoned it. Since nobody lived in the house in the picture, it wasn't treated as a big deal. Brianna lived by herself so nobody even realized she was missing for several days. What? Her mother didn't- Oh, fuck that- Okay, that's- that's- that would- I can't handle that. That- that's one thing that, like, always scares me. Is... Something happening and no one ever know. Like, I do not want to be one of those people who die, but- you know, you find the body three months later because the neighbor smell weird smells coming from next door. That's, that's, no, I don't, no, thank, no. No. Learn about her abandoned car until five days after her disappearance. Even though they probably drive past it, going to work, no one... When she was finally clued in, she filed a missing persons report immediately. Needless to say, after a short investigation, the police started to suspect foul play. They believed that Brianna was likely taken by more than one individual. Whether she was ambushed while still in her vehicle, or whether the whole scene in this what? picture was staged by the perpetrators to make it look like an accident, remains unknown. Oh, damn. Many people- I didn't even think of that shit. Or maybe like during the struggle, she hit the gear shift. Some 
the older models didn't have not all of them had a thing where you had to hit the brake and pull out of gear some of them would just slip out of gear so why you always set your emergency brake with them so maybe during the tussle something went fuckered and everything just Maybe when she hit, looks like she hit decently hard enough. I mean, it went up. That'd be enough to like bring her forward. Maybe she kind of like, Phew. then it just came over and drug her the hell out because she was like stunned. Love the car though. I really do. People have also linked Brianna's disappearance to another case, that of Maura Murray a college student who vanished 90 miles away only one month prior. Okay, let's thicken the plot a little. Oh, fuck. On the day of her disappearance, Brianna had been out shopping with her mother, Kelly. While the pair were in a store, something caught Brianna's eye outside. She told Kelly that she'd be right back. Brianna didn't return to the store. Instead, her mother met her outside in the parking lot. According to Kelly, Brianna was clearly shaken, unnerved and agitated. She told her mum that she needed to go home and prepare for her shift at the Black Lantern. That was the last time Brianna's mother saw her daughter. To this day, she has no idea what happened outside that store that distressed her daughter so much. In the weeks following Brianna's vanishing, the police received an anonymous tip-off. They were told that Brianna was being held against her will in a rented house only 10 miles outside of Montgomery. The house was raided. It was occupied by two crack dealers, and there were plenty of narcotics strewn around the building. What? What there wasn't, however, was any trace of- Man, this plot is getting thick. Three C's, bro. Brianna. When the cops interviewed her close friends, they confessed that Brianna had recently experimented with illicit substances, so it's possible the tip was legit. The police also received an anonymous letter saying that Brianna had been dismembered and fed to pigs. That's a Mr. Ballin video all in itself, but I ain't gonna lie, we just we we watched one like that. Why? Is that popular? Is that a popular way to dispose of people? Did you feed it to the piggies? I'm, I'm so glad I don't eat meat. These claims have never been corroborated. Brianna's parents received numerous phone calls from an unknown person. The person would sometimes tell them that their daughter was tied to a tree in the woods. Other times they'd tell them that she'd been left at the bottom of a lake. I hate people like that. I, I do so much. That family is going through some of the hardest shit. Losing a child. And there's assholes in this world that want to make that worse. If you are one of those assholes, stop. <laughs> it's not fun for anyone. Maybe you, but no one else. Just, just stop. This is not. This no. Don't do it. This is bad. This is bad. This will do a bad. Don't do a bad. As of right now, nobody knows what happened to Brianna. All we have is this unsettling photo, though we still don't know if she had crashed the car in some frantic effort to escape, or if this whole scene had just been constructed by her captors. In 2006. A woman closely resembling Brianna was caught on CCTV at a casino poker table in New Jersey. All efforts to track down this woman have failed. With, 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 with all the technology in the world, y'all can't do like some reverse shit and find the face somewhere? Is, is it that difficult? 11 months ago, Reddit user Mafrek made a post on R Unexplained Photos. His friend had recently purchased a camera with a motion detector that was linked to his phone. When the pair went off to the pub one evening, Mafrek's friend left his camera on charge in his bedroom. While they were out, his phone sent him a notification that motion had been detected back at his house. It then sent him this image.
Is this some motherfucker right there? Oh, hell no, bro. Hell, hell, hell to the no, sir. That's something that show have shoulders, knees, and toes. Knees and toes. I see it. Oh, uh. some people have speculated that it could be a homeless person. Others have suggested it was likely an intruder hoping to hurt somebody. Strangely, though, Maverick stated that his friend lives in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you can't see the picture behind it. That's a person. If it was a ghost, you'd be able to see that picture frame all the way through. Unless this is the picture frame. Maybe it's a ghost. And has an Alsatian that would have attacked an intruder. Nothing was taken from the house, and the camera didn't pick up any further movement. This has led a few people to think that the figure is some sort of paranormal entity. Then again, if a person simply walked into the I room mean... and left quickly. Okay, it's not out of the realm of pessim pe 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 sure. It is not out of the realm of possibilities. There we go. Okay. There is literally head. As you hold on. There. There's a head. There's shoulders. You can see the elbow. The fists look like they're balled up. I mean, if you look really close, zoom in, enhance, zoom and enhance, you know, looks like the fists are balled up. Clearly looks like they're, it's got like that. I mean, it's something. And I'm going to go ahead and say whatever the, that the, the something is, it, it's pissed. It's angry. It, it's violent. It is. It's hangry. Give it a Snickers bar. The device wouldn't have tracked his movements further anyway. True. Not to mention, when looking at this enhanced image, the figure definitely... Enhanced! Zoom and enhance! There we go! Zoom! Appears physical. Regardless, Zoom. the house was searched. Ooh. Oh no! You... You, I feel like you can kind of see through it, like slightly. I, it might just be my eyes playing tricks on me, but this right here looks like the picture frame going through. I, I'm sorry, your neck's going to be bigger than that. That looks like the picture frame here. Unless he's got like a one inch neck, I don't know, but. And this could just be darkening the stuff behind it because it does look a little bit lighter down here, like it's following a pattern of the picture. I mean, what if it is a spirit from the other side? When the what if it's an angry spirit from the other side? Don't know why you have to do your face like this when you say spirit from the other side. But you do. Don't ask questions. And no intruders were found lurking in the nooks and crannies. Maverick's friend is just lucky he wasn't sleeping in bed when this unknown person wandered into his room. Here's my question. What if he wouldn't have been sleeping in bed? What if he'd been laying in bed? Just like, you know, just got done with the day. Just went there and just... Oh. Everybody's had that moment where you're, you don't want to go to bed, but you just, you want to lay down just for, just for a moment. Like, kick your shoes off, still have your britches on, take your shirt off, just lay, lay back on the bed. What if he was doing that, looked up, and there's this dude sitting over him. <laughs> I would freak the fuck out. I would have came up swinging, biting, peeing, ever so lightly, ever so lightly. The question remains, however, what enhanced. this mysterious figure want? He wanted enhanced. It's fucking disappearing. This is the last. This was a video. Was it that chapter, Mr. Ballin? One, the other? I think that's. I remember. But I remember that. Because she looks angry. 
And I specifically said, people said, you know, it was a debate, like, whether she was posing for it or, no, she's mad. That That's what kids do when they're mad at them. We know. We all know. We all been there. If you ain't been there, ask someone who has. They know. I promise. But I remember this. Hey. Whole family went missing, I think? I don't know if they ever found the bodies. Maybe they did. I, I don't remember for sure. But I know that it's taken out. The whole family left. And some speculate it was like a cult thing. And then I want to say like everything tracked him up to the hill. And then it's just, I think there was a dog too. I think the dog lived. Photo taken of Madison Jameson, who disappeared in 2009 along with her mother, Sherilyn, and her father, Bobby. The family had driven 30 miles from their home in Eufaula to Red Oak, Oklahoma. They were searching for a property to buy and were reported missing a few days later. After three days of searching for them, authorities came across their abandoned truck. It looked as if the Jamesons had left in a hurry. Inside the locked pickup, with their car should have been car keys the dog and i think money like thirty five thousand dollars worth of money or maybe more than that i know there was a lot of money keys gps and thirty two thousand dollars in cash the family dog Maisie, was still inside the car as well severely malnourished but still alive also inside the vehicle were bobby's and sherilyn's cell phones this picture of Madison was discovered on her father's phone. There was a huge mountain search effort to find the missing family, but there was no trace of them anywhere. Then, four years later, in 2013, a local hunter made a horrific discovery. He came across the skeletal remains of three people, laying side by side. It was the Jameson family. Their skeletons weren't intact and were in very bad condition. They were found a mere three miles from their abandoned truck. Due to the state of their remains, an autopsy was impossible. Their official COD is listed as unknown. So, what happened to them? There are a surprising number of theories. Their there family are. remains convinced. The, okay, if... I don't know if he goes into it or not. I'm going to go into it really fast. I believe in the one that we did... I'll see if I can link it in the description. If I can find it, I don't remember which video it was. So you don't hold me to it or do and be sorely angry at me because I can't, because I don't remember. But either way, uh, there was, I'm pretty sure, video footage of them acting weird as they was packing up their vehicle and stuff. They didn't know why they got the money. I think the wife was like into some like witchy poo shit. And they said that they was acting like zombies when they was loading up the car and stuff. Plus the money. They left. They, I believe they had someone living with them that was a part of a motorcycle gang. I don't remember which one. I don't remember if they even said they think that they might have something to do with it. They think that that or they had someone do it or there's so many. It's a, I like the story because of that it's like so many possibilities is crazy, but still it's quite sad. That the three of them were murdered. Sherilyn's mother, Connie, he even claims that the family were slain by a religious cult. According to her, Sherilyn had been on the cult's hit list for a long time. Yeah. Bobby's cranium was found with an unexplained hole in it, which gives some credence to her theory. They also believe that this photo of Madison was taken by whoever took their lives. Some people think Madison's expression in the image is one of fear, of discomfort, but others think that she's just in the middle of saying something. As such, no. it's hard to know exactly what was happening. That baby man. Look at the puffiness under the eyes. 
she got some dirt looks like she's look, it does look like she has fell i mean seriously look there's like dirt looks like little scrapes going the same way as the dirt see like right through here going down and there's like some dirt might be a little bit of redness right in through here she look angry she don't look happy and at the moment this image was snapped madison's parents had been acting strangely in the months leading up to their disappearance mm -hmm. both bobby and sherilyn had become extremely thin and emaciated on the day before they disappeared, they were caught on CCTV, loading up their car in a trance-like state, shuffling around like zombies. Okay. They had also become intensely paranoid. Sherilyn had told her friends that she had been experiencing ghostly visions and hauntings, and Bobby had confessed to a priest that he had been reading a satanic bible, and that he wanted some special bullets to do battle with evil spirits. Yeah. Uh... Oh god, I want to say silver bullets. You want silver bullets? Because I believe I made a joke about werewolves. Don't judge me. You don't know the joke. Unless you do, then... Thanks for watching. Yeah. Ha! When they took all of this into consideration, the authorities first put this down to the two becoming hooked on meth, a substance that's often made in the rural area the family disappeared in. However... No trace of any illegal substance was found in their home. I mean, they could have even been like pulled over taking a hike and came across like some place where somebody was cooking some meth or, you know, growing some drugs of some sort and met their untimely fate that way and then they packed up and moved on. Some people have put the Jameson's weird behavior because I believe it was several years before their bodies were found down to the fact that they were experimenting with witchcraft. Yeah. In a way. And that kind of links us back to the possibility of cult involvement. On top of all these theories, both of Madison's parents suffered with depression. A long, hateful letter from Sherilyn to Bobby was even found. Yeah, oh, I forgot about that. Evidently, this lady right here wrote this fella here about how she was angry with him. I don't even remember what for. He'll get into it. But she was angry. Like, it literally sounded like. Their whole marriage was over because of whatever, and then they just disappeared together. That That's weird. ...in their abandoned truck. Though, according to Sherilyn's mother, this was common practice. What wasn't found in the truck was Sherilyn's handgun. Is it possible that she had had enough of life and decided to take her family with her? Was Bob Her family says no. I don't know. Bobby in on the whole thing too. If that's the case, why would they have bothered to take their dog with them? Because if I'm not mistaken, I told a story about my my mother. She she suffers from depression and schizophrenia and stuff like that. Sometimes it's not her. Like, it ain't. So, I mean, as much as you want to think a parent wouldn't do it, you would be very surprised. Sad to say. Why would they have taken enough money for a deposit on a property? Was the money even intended for a plot of land in the first place? Yeah, why are you going to take $32,000? Like, that's what was shady. And where did you get the $32,000? Because I'm pretty sure neither one of them worked. Unless it was drawing something. I forget. And if they were actually slain, why would the perpetrator place Bobby's phone back inside the pickup and not take the 32 k on the front seat? The exact cause of the Jameson family's untimely fate remains a mystery, but this photograph at least gives us a glimpse into Madison's final moments and makes the case all the more real and harrowing. Dry dog. Seen this one before, but I think it's creepy enough to warrant a place in this video. In 2014. A foreman took a camera aboard an old frigate that was dry docked. The ship was being dismantled, and he was tasked with taking pictures of the work areas. Oh, yeah. He took hundreds of photos and sent them all to his boss. 
Looking through all the images, the boss came across one in particular that caught his attention. The fire? He sent the image back to the foreman with a question. Who's the guy with the axe at the edge of the camera flash? This was the image. Oh, shit. When you answer it, it becomes all the more clear and disturbing. No. I ain't dealing with that bullshit. There's no way I'm fucked. That's a legit, like, you can, it's a newer one, too. It's still got the label on it. Right there. You can see it. It's perfectly square. Whoop. Fresh, new, shiny blade on the tip of it. He looking at you. He an older feller, too. He an older feller. The foreman hadn't seen anybody else on board the frigate. It was supposed to be empty. Look that. The picture was taken deep in the ship, and it was extremely dark. He was walking around with a torch to guide his way. When he took a photo, he'd turn off the torch, briefly leaving him in total darkness. Then, after he'd snapped his image with the flash on, he'd turn the torch back on and continue through the ship. This man had been lurking in the blackness the entire time. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> With some Five Nights at Freddy's bullshit is this. Am I wrong? A flashlight, a camera, some creepy ass weird thing in the corner holding an axe. This is some Five Nights at Freddy's shit. Oh, they need to do one, like, Freddy Fazbear's party yacht. No, it'd have to be a submarine. That'd be ten times more scary, knowing that you're deep underwater and can die. Hey, call me. My idea. Nobody who worked at the dock recognized the man in the picture. Since it was a military vessel, the boat was thoroughly searched. Nobody was found on board and the security camera that was pointing at the ship's only exit didn't record anybody leaving either. Maybe just lives to there. To this day, nobody has any idea who the axe-wielding man in the image is, or what he was doing on the ship in the first place. Whatever the case, whenever I see this picture, <laughs> it always gives me the chills. Who started the fire, though? Did he start the fire? We didn't start the fire. Here's one for all you code breakers out there. On the subreddit, R Crimes, a picture was posted with a bizarre title. A seemingly random series of letters and characters. This was wow. the accompanying picture. A little eerie to look at, sure, but without any context, nobody really knew what to make of it. That's where user Calio came in. Since the last seven characters were just letters, he used a caesarean shift of plus 13 to reveal a cryptic message. That's where A equals M, B equals O, and C equals P, etc. Okay. By ignoring the other characters and just decoding the letters, this message was revealed. Um, John Baptista Mann, metadata, correct. So what was this message supposed to mean, and how did it relate to the picture? I don't know. John Baptista Mann was the name of a man who, in 1969, was slain in Buffalo Narrows. His killer was Frederick Moses McCallum. The right. user who originally posted the image and the cryptic clue also happened to have a photo of McCallum as his profile picture. As to the meaning of the metadata correct part, that's anyone's guess. Perhaps it means there's more information hidden in the image. The OP also made a second post, this time with a string of seemingly random letters and numbers. This was found to translate Oh, that would give me such a headache. It would. Oh, there's too many numbers. You know, my brain don't do that. They don't do that. They don't have this thing with numbers. It, it don't. They, they, nope. Late into. Letters are key. Since then, there have been no other posts. So, what is this all supposed to mean? I don't know. Is it a confession? Yeah. A riddle? No. Just an ARG. Maybe. How does the photo fit into it all? 
Hopefully it's less sinister than the image and messages imply. Oh no, oh no. Oh, I don't know. This is just, just a blurry photo to me. Shot with a potato. This is one of the only known pictures of the Leather Man, a traveling vagabond. Who? Despite his story becoming quite infamous in Connecticut and New York, the Leather Man's true identity remains unknown. He was given his nickname for the simple fact that no matter the weather or the season, he always wore a handmade leather suit. From 1856 to 1882. That's just badass, bro. But was it people leather or was it animal leather? There, there's a difference. I mean, <sighs> Still cool as shit, though. Nine. He traveled a continuous circuit between Western Connecticut and the Hudson River, a 365 mile route that took him 35 days to walk. Mm. Everybody along the trail knew the Leather Man, and he traveled the route with such accuracy that he'd always arrive at the same places within a few hours of when he was expected to. Whenever he came across a new scrap of leather on his trail, he would sew it into his ever-expanding suit. He hardly ever talked to anybody, communicating mostly in gestures and grunts. On the rare occasion he did talk, he spoke in broken English, and if asked about his background, he would abruptly end the conversation. Regardless, people fed him. When they offered him shelter, he'd always refuse. He lived in a series of caves along the trail that you can still explore to this day. One such cave consists of an 8-foot vertical chute that you have to climb down, and a small tunnel that goes 10 to 15 feet back. Even during the harsh winters in that part of the USA, he stuck to his routine and continued to sleep in his caves. Nobody knows why he lived the way he did. I mean, our cave is that bad. I mean, once you get so far down in there, it stays basically about the same temperature. You build your nice little fire, have it to where, you know, you can be quite nice in a cave. They did it all the time. Hence, cavemen. People, cave people. It went. Cave persons is. Politically correct. Medical professionals at the time said he was suffering from an emotional affliction. You can take that how you want. Regardless, he was judged to be of sound mind and was living a nomadic lifestyle by choice. Hey. He eventually passed away and was found with a French prayer book on his person. Most people agree that he was probably either French or French Canadian. Still, despite extensive research, Nobody at the time, or even to this day for that matter, could work out his true identity. The brass plaque over his final resting place simply reads, The Leather Man. Tales and theories abound to this day. I mean, don't get me wrong, people are looking at that like that's fucking weird. But you have people like that now. I mean, look at the people who just want to live completely off grid. You see it on YouTube all the time. Three years off grid capital bullshit. Fucking van life. Some people just really enjoy that. I mean, don't get me wrong. They usually work remotely and stuff like that, or they do something where they can still support themselves. But the nomadic lifestyle has been a lifestyle... People to this day still crave, still want. And sometimes it lasts a lifetime. Sometimes it's something new. Sometimes it's something old. Sometimes, you know, you just don't really care. But everybody goes through it sometime, somehow, some way. You just want to get up and go. I admit this mystery isn't exactly creepy like all the others, but I'd never... No, that picture's pretty fucking creepy. I've heard of this guy before, and I wanted to share his story. Thank you. It's interesting it. to hear about local celebrities from times gone by, especially ones with unknown origins. It really is. Apparently, Leatherman tools are even named after this guy, so he clearly had an impact on people back in the day. Let me That's... know what you think about this mystery and all the others down in the comments below. Perhaps we can come up with a few answers. Leatherman tools. 
That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. <laughs> that last one, I like that. He's right, not creepy. Not scary. Not a, oh my god. You, nothing like that. No. But creepy to the extent that back in the day he didn't know what he was doing, didn't know what was going through his mind, never talked to no one. That was probably more scary to everyone around him than just being a raging dick the whole time and just nobody wanting nothing to do with you. Like mm -hmm. why? So, but now, like I said, it's nothing unusual, though. People love the nomadic lifestyle. I, I would do it. If I could, I would. I really would. I'd be on the road. Just traveling all over the damn place. It would be amazing. Me, I, I, I love it. Now, the kids and the lady, they're more... No. They would do it for a while, but... I don't think they'd do it forever. Me, I, I could do it forever. No lie. Get tired of neighbors, just go. Fuck it. I can respect that. All right. I really enjoyed today's story. If you really enjoyed today's story, you know what you should do? Just take a moment out of your day to go down there and hit that like button. And, you know, while you're down there hitting that like button because you're just that nice of a person, think about subscribing. Especially if you like the spooky, scary, strange, deranged. Things are just make you go, huh. Think about subscribing. I guarantee you, by the end of at least one of my videos, you're going to be sitting there and you're going to be like, huh. Just like that. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. So, I love Leatherman Tools. My, my, one of my most favorite brands of, like, little pocket tools is named after what probably or could or potentially be some traveling, deranged, murdering, psychopathic cannibalistic serial killer nobody knows a damn thing about him or who he even is well i mean if he would have dyed all the leather black he could have been like batman maybe that's like batman's like ancestor of some sort he didn't really look like a bat because, you know, he didn't have the cool ears on his mask. So, they just called him Leatherman.